ね薄いのはほムーンプリズムパワーメイクアップオッカードレディー Welcome to Shoujo and Tell where you discuss shoujo manga and tell who's hot and who's not talk about themes and just generally geek out Today, December 18th, 2022, will be Shoujo and Telling about the series Twinkle Stars by Natsuki Takia. I'm your host, Ashley McDonald, and I'm joined by Colleen, creator of Colleen's Manga Rex. Hello, Colleen. Hello. Hello. So, Colleen, if, for people who have lived under the Shoujo rock somehow and <laughs> don't know who you are, or for posterity 50 years from now when somebody stumbles upon this podcast. <laughs> Would you like to say more about yourself? Yeah,、um, I'm Colleen. I make shoujo and jose manga content over on YouTube. I started out on TikTok, but then I was kind of like, you know what? Let me try some long form content. So, made the, made the switch to YouTube、uh, maybe like six, seven months ago now, and it's been going pretty well for me. So, <laughs> yeah. So、I just kind of do little skits sometimes and then informational videos on Shoujo and Jose. Yes, and you make wonderful Twitter threads as well. Oh, thank you. Like, <laughs> just be, being like, here are all the greatest manga, and they're all just secretly Shoujo. That's, <laughs> that's great. I love it. I'm a, I'm a secret Shoujo person. I just I slide it in whenever I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> And then all the shonen people come and they're like, what? I don't understand. One piece is not on here. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> That's how it goes. All right. So today we are here to talk about Twinkle Stars, which is from the author of this little manga called Fruits Basket. So I don't know if you ever heard of her or anything. That, that's chill. This is the one manga that has been completed by her, I believe, between Fruits Basket and Fruits Basket spinoffs. Fruits Basket, another, more Fruits Basket. So, we will try to keep this early section spoiler free, like 10 15 minutes of high level Twinkle Stars. And then we're going to just go real ham into it, but I will give you a spoiler warning. So, Colleen, for people who are like, I've only read Fruits Basket, which I think is a lot of people, <laughs> <Yeah> . what is Twinkle Stars about? Okay, so I would say Twinkle Stars, the premise of it is basically about a third year high school girl named Sakuya. Who、uh, lives with her cousin, and she really in- loves, enjoys looking at stars.、Uh, she has said several times in the beginning of the manga that she has no idea what stars are what and what they're called. She just likes looking at them. She's pretty.、Um, one night she comes home, and there's a random boy sitting in her house that her cousin just seems to be okay with. So she's like, Oh, cool. Okay. So that's my cousin's friend. And then turns out neither of them know who this guy is. And he just showed up in their house. And then basically, the entire first volume of the manga is her trying to figure out who this guy is and what his deal is and where he came from. And it's a nice little like mystery portion in the beginning. Yeah. I was def- I definitely just kept reading because I was like, This all seems ridiculous, but like, I need to know. I need to know what's going to happen here. Like, I need, what is his deal? I need to know. And then I found out, of course, and I was like, oh, no, this is a Takia manga. Though, but, <laughs> like, Nothing will ever be good. <laughs> no. <laughs> but we'll get there. We'll get there. So I must admit that despite years of being like, like when, you know, Yen Press re released Fruits Basket and then they just. Release Twinkle Stars and all these other things. I was like, I need to read that. And then I didn't. And then you in a video were like, I really love this manga. And I was again like, I need to read that. <laughs> and I didn't. <laughs> and then I asked you, and we were both like, Twinkle Stars though. And so now we're here. <laughs> That's how this happened. <laughs> yeah. The fact that we both landed on Twinkle Stars, I thought was so funny. And then like the other one that we had discussed was another just like very traumatic series as well. So we were just going for the trauma on either end. You were like, it's, it's trauma time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's how we're here. So again, you really love this series. And I guess I want to know like what your favorite aspect of it is. And sub question from a listener. Kotaro Cult on Instagram asks, Is Twinkle Stars in the same level as Fruits Basket? And which one do you like the most? That's a lot of questions. I'm going to let you think about that. So, my favorite aspect, I would definitely say it's a much like quieter series. I feel like I use that word to describe like series that don't 
they're more introspective. Like there's not as much back and forth dialogue all the time. It's very like quiet. There's very like intimate moments without much dialogue going on, I guess. And the themes of like space and the stars, I feel like it's just much more, uh, it's always so hard to describe it because it like gives me this certain kind of feeling that I always chalk up to like indie romance, like indie romance movies, Mm -hmm. but there's just like a certain quality about it, a certain feeling about it that I get from the series that I just don't get from Fruits Basket in a way. Personally, I do think this one is, like, better than Fruits Basket in a lot of ways. But uh, I know if I say that, a lot of people are going to be like, what? How? <laughs> well, you just said it. <laughs> no, but I said it quietly, so they won't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I actually, so my take on this I agree with you about the quiet aspects. Like I was just like screenshotting all the pages that were just not like a person and the the sky or like no dialogue, just her cousin and her like having a moment or whatever. I was like, that's that stuff's great. I want to like just sit in that that moment for a while. And then I was like, all right, yeah, we, we inevitably have to compare it to Fruits Basket. And I was like, you know, I feel like what happened here was. Takia with Fruits Basket, yeah, there's a freneticness and there's the cutesy animals thing and everything. I was like, she used that to like lure us in and then and then make us cry for like 20 volumes, right? But I feel like people still get hung up on all the silly aspects of it. Like they're just like, I want to talk about the Zodiac and like hug a cute animal. So I feel like with this one, she was like, no, <laughs> no, you missed the point and I'm not gonna let you miss it this time like we're just going really really hard in a realistic setting like they don't have cell phones like we're not getting distracted by anything like we're just sitting in our feelings and you're gonna deal with it (laughs) and I was like okay all right we get it this time like I'm here for it but also stop (laughs) because you hurt me so much (laughs) yeah she was going for much more heavy drama not that there's not heavy drama in Fruits Basket but there's a lot of like intercut jokes and intercut like slice of life moments but in this one it's kind of intercut as well but it's less so it's just like drama 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 oh okay some nice moments drama 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 (laughs) yeah 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 you're like the jokes land good actually oh no but now we're back in like sad land stuff i can't yeah (laughs) yeah so i i'm i'm like hesitant to say one is better than the other i think they're definitely just like in dialogue about the same thing and and maybe it just you know like fruits basket has clearly won the culture wars you y'all like we we don't don't need to spark drama like this i think that twinkle stars is equally if like as good as fruits basket though that that is i would say that yes i usually just chalk it up to they're both good in their own ways like fruits basket it has its way of being like a little cutesier and this one has its way of being like a little more mature a little more realistic so it's really just down to preference, you know? My preference is just, I like the, it feels more realistic to me for Twinkle Stars. So like, that's the one that I like. Yeah. Young Me definitely actually probably would have preferred this more realistic stuff. Like I love a good, sad, realistic drama. Like I'm st- I'm still watching Grey's Anatomy. I'm that person who's like made Grey's Anatomy go on for way too long. I'm like, I'm, st- I'm that, I'm that millennial. I'm like, stop. <laughs> like I need to stop. <laughs> that That's what's up. Uh, so yeah, definitely. I'm like, Twinkle Stars, here for it. But also, no, my tear ducts at 1 a.m. Like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but also save me from like crying my eyes out 24 seven while reading it. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, both both things are true. Uh, I also think, like, it's harder to get, a t- like, there's more characters in Fruits Basket, which we'll get into a more direct comparison. But I feel like Sakia feels, like, I definitely like Sakia better than Toru, if I was going to, like, no, <laughs> oh, I got to delete myself from my own podcast. <laughs> delete track. <laughs> all, get, all all the, track. get all the Toru stands coming at you. <laughs> Listen, I have a newfound appreciation of Toru in my old age, but I still think that Sakya, I don't like, was more realistic for me. We'll get into it. So that's like, if you want to cry a lot and you're intrigued by something that we're like, it's as good as Fruits Basket, if not better, <laughs> like, go for it. It is available physically and digitally from Yen Press in English. 
I will give a content warning for this one that I was like, Fruits Basket goes places. But this one, there's like a major plot point is about a suicide attempt. So if that would be not good for you, then maybe don't read this one. Don't just reread Fruits Basket. That's fine. So here we go. We're going to spoil all of the traumatic things that have happened. So if you have not (laughs) read Twinkle Stars, like pause, go do that or don't. I don't control you. And then, or if you don't care, just keep going. Let's go. We're going. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, so we got another listener question that I think is just a good way to kind of jump into talking about all of the characters individually. There are, again, less than Fruits Basket, which makes it possible to do this <laughs> in the first place. Uh, so, yes. And then we'll uh, discuss themes more deeply. So, at my cat name, Aiko on Instagram said Twinkle Stars uses a cast of characters that's less large than Fruits Basket. How do you consider the mangaka managed her cast compared to Fruits Basket? Do the side characters have more or less importance? To keep it high level, I do think the side characters the side characters have more impact, I think, but are less present. That's how I would I would say it. Yeah, the the side characters in this one, they the way that they interact with the characters leaves more of an impression on the character themselves. I feel like in, like in Fruits Basket, the thing that's going to suck about this episode is we're going to have to go back to Fruits Basket a lot because it is, you know, such a huge series and it's also Takaya's series. So, but yeah, going, going to Fruits Basket, Toru is the one kind of leaving an impact on everyone, but only in like smaller ways. Like she hasn't impacted their personalities. She's just kind of like showing them love and showing them that they can be loved. And in Twinkle Stars, it's much more like these side characters have impacted their personality down the line because they're all kind of intertwined in each other's childhoods. So I feel like that's how the side characters and all of the characters really just kind of impact each other in different ways, other than Chihiro, who isn't around until the series starts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Until he's a mystery man at the, for like three <laughs> volumes. And you're like, what is your deal, bro? <laughs> what is your deal? Yeah. It's also like, yeah, Sakuya compared to Toru is affecting change on everyone, but it's it's more obvious that everybody else is affecting change on her like really rapidly as well. Like I feel like Tor- Toru gets there, but only like 15 volumes in are you like, okay, you're not just like sheltering her and like being cute with her. You're like getting to a deep rooted problem that she has. Whereas Sakuya is like, yeah problem like immediately right like needs to be solved gonna gonna slowly like build something new around that that's so that's that's good I think I think the thing with Brutes Basket that comes to mind when juggling characters is is it what I forget what their name was uh Ritsu the monkey like totally a non-presence in <laughs> Fruits Basket aside from like two chapters you know that cast was just too large so Twinkle Stars does better at being like I also intensely when I'm writing I'm like how can you manage more than like five characters I don't understand <laughs> like it doesn't make sense to me so I, I appreciate the smaller cast in this yeah she definitely set herself up a little bit when she uh did a, a series about the zodiac animals <laughs> having to specifically <laughs> yeah. have that many characters <laughs> Yeah, and then she's like, uh, and then there have to be other characters that aren't them, too? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's way too many characters. Wait a second here. <laughs> like, maybe this is too much. So we don't have that problem in Twinkle Stars. That's very nice. Yeah, so to go just more deeply into these main characters, since we haven't even, like, said the names of three of them. <laughs> so the major characters are Sakia, the main protagonist, who is not Toru. Chihiro, mystery man, ball of depression is how I would describe him. <laughs> he's, do- he's doing a great job pretending that he's not depressed when he needs to, but he's super depressed. Um, Yuri, who is ray of sunshine. I would describe him like I wrote shallow, thoughtless kindness, and I think that's true. And the way I thought of him was like a more realistic, therefore worse Kazehaya from Kimi Oh, you know what? That's a good, yeah. I would say 
that's pretty much him. Just he's meaner sometimes. <laughs> right. Like the whole thing, I think the impetus behind how they became friends is kind of sim- or like what's attracted to her to him is similar to how Sawako likes Kazehaya. And like, but then when, she, you know, Saki. Sa- Sakuya, God, I'm getting all the <laughs> syllables confused. Sak- Sakuya, <laughs> like when she goes up to him, she's like, "Yeah, I, I knew he would be mean to me. Like, there's a limit to his kindness." Whereas, like, you know, when Sawako goes up to Kazehaya, he's he's still a ball of sunshine. So I'm like, "Yeah, okay, uh, that's how I think of him." <laughs> and then uh, we have Hijiri, who's a child's idea of an adult. I think that's the yeah. summary I would give her. Yeah, yeah, she's trying, and yet. Uh, we're going to get into her. And then Kanade, who is uh, the aforementioned cousin who uh, Sayuka lives with. <laughs> uh, now I'm just going to mess it up all the time. Just new uh, names. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is my Basara episode all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me, people. I like, I'm sometimes I'm like, am I a little bit dyslexic? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> so, all right. So of this main cast, like, yeah, what's. What's your hot take on like Chihiro, you know, when we find out everything? I here's the thing. I absolutely love Chihiro's character and I think he's written in such a great way that makes sense for like how a, an 18-year-old would think that like taking care of someone would be, but at the yes. same time it's just like man, did he have to do it and uh, like leave in the way that he did. And especially when you get to those last, what, two chapters and he's, he's with uh, Sakura again. And he's like, yeah, I can't be, you can't be my girlfriend. I'm just going to take care of you. And it's just kind of like, Hey man, maybe she just needs a therapist. Like she doesn't need, <laughs> yeah. I get what he's trying to do because he's like, Oh, I learned all these things from Sakuya and like being, around her and Hijiri and Yuri and Kanade. But like, you don't need to like, uproot your own life just for someone else. I that that whole part was like, it's always a little like, hard to swallow, honestly, especially because it's right at the end of the series. So but it's definitely what I feel like a teenager would do in that situation. Because like, they're just thinking about the one person and not like their own life. Yeah, I definitely was going to be like, how did you feel about this ending? Because I I feel like I did not expect him to be like, yeah, I'm going to run off to Sakura, my once girlfriend who tried to commit suicide and was in a coma for an undisclosed amount of time and has to go to physical therapy and was never well to begin with. And I was like, no, what? No. Like, I agree with you that... I don't know. I'm of two minds about that like particular decision. I think the way that he behaves all through up to that point totally makes sense for an 18 year old. Like the way that he's like, I'm just pretending and he can be fun, but he's kind of a jerk, but like a lovable jerk <laughs> and like having a, having a good time and like totally falls in love with this girl who's kind of similar to his old girlfriend, but like not as ne- in need of anything at this point <laughs> as she was. And so I'm like, but then he made that decision. And I was like, I don't know, I don't know about this. Yeah, it, it's such a hard, it's such a hard thing for me to decide whether I like that ending or not. And in a lot of ways, I remember the first time when I read it, I was like, this feels like an epilogue. It feels like the, yeah. the series ended when he left and then the start of like when they're graduating and then he's finally in Tokyo. I feel like those are epilogue chapters to me. And it also feels that way because when I was reading the books on the side panel, I had noticed that Takaya said that she was expecting the series to go for, I think it was nine volumes, but it ended up going 10. So I'm like, I feel like she kind of had to pad had some time there so she was like you know what I'll throw like a, oh. an epilogue in there to finish the series off and make it a little happier at the end but I almost kind of feel like this one would have been fine being open-ended yeah I guess I wanted him to like really commit to like I chose Sakura yeah and like that's just how it ended and I didn't want to have to see like him come back and 
Sakuya be sad and everything. Like I was like, no, commit to it. Commit to it. That's what your uncle and aunt wanted you to do. They were like, do you understand the decision? You were like, yeah. And I'm like, all right. Like, did you understand? And I definitely, even at the time was like, but what if Sakura chooses to be like, hey, get out of here. Yeah. (laughs) You know? I did appreciate that about that last chapter that we got to see more of like Sakura getting better and like learning that she needs to be independent from this guy who was around when she wasn't like doing too hot. (laughs) So like seeing, seeing her get better and realize she's kind of holding him back and realizing that she can start to do things on her own and not have to rely on this guy who is nice to her once back in the day, who really doesn't have any other emotional attachments to her other than just being like the one who is her boyfriend I guess they were like boyfriend girlfriend in childhood so that was that was nice for her but the whole time I was just like Chihiro man (laughs) (laughs) Chihiro man what are you doing and he he uses language like he's like I like he was basically like I have to pay it forward and I'm like I mean you should but you don't have to pay it forward like this that's not how this works yeah because you almost just kind of burden the other person with being like okay I'm gonna be around now but I'm not gonna be your boyfriend (laughs) like yeah it's like what's up with you bro and then it's like if he wasn't gonna be her boyfriend like he could have just said that to Sakia you know and like they could have just still been in a like he could have just been like well I can have both like that's what he chose in the end anyway I was like I don't understand (laughs) I don't understand yeah he could have definitely just done like a long term or not long term a long distance relationship but instead he just kind of left it like hey I'm going back to Sakura (laughs) yeah he was like I'm going to Tokyo peace and it's like what and like I don't know. I love his aunt and uncle because they were, you know, they were like, well, when we took you in, we were like, we're in it for the long haul. So like you choose to live in Tokyo. We're going too." And I was like, I mean, I get the message we're trying to send here. But like this situation is bananas in a different way from all the shenanigans of their crappy parents. Otherwise, I like, I don't I don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. The, the ending's a little meh. Nah. Which sucks because I I love this series so much, but like the last couple of chapters, I'm just kind of like, eh, but it doesn't ruin my overall enjoyment, really. It's just kind of like, how much does this affect the entire story? Not much, yeah. but it also Not just really. kind of makes me mad. <laughs> yeah, I think it's funny because... I mean, the thing that should like the thing that is a bit exhausting about the beginning is that you're like, this is very far-fetched <laughs> and like where are we going with this and I remember once we finally know that it's like oh the friend Hijiri comes and he's she's like he already has a girlfriend in Tokyo who like I don't it's unclear to me whether she knows that she's in a she doesn't know she's in a coma right she like Hijiri does not know that she's been in a coma so then it's just like you know he had a girlfriend in Tokyo like they basically have the same name so when you know Kanade came and was like, hey, are you Saku's boyfriend? It's like, oh, like in his mind, he was just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Duh. like, of course I am. And I'm like, That's still so far fetched. <laughs> but like, OK. <laughs> yeah. The fact that neither of them say anything when he's just like <laughs> sitting in their house for a good couple of hours and then they're just like, oh, you don't know him? <laughs> you don't know him? Like, I thought he was your friend. I thought he was your boyfriend. That's a great reveal, though. I really love that. Like, <laughs> comedic-wise, that's that's good. But, like, that's not the tone of the series at this point. So it's like, okay, that's cool. Yeah, I wonder if it's just, like, a small town thing. They were just kind of like, <laughs> hey, that, it's one Too of the polite. guys in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy, he goes to your school or something. I don't know. Like, <laughs> we got to be friends with everybody. Woo! Oh my gosh, yeah. So like Sakia and Chihiro sure are balls of depression. And <laughs> great way to describe them. That's a way to describe them, yes. And then we have Yuri and Hijiri, who are Sakia's like two friends who she makes in this new town after she was so Sakia's situation was that her parents 
kind of sucked even when they were together, but then they get a divorce. And in the custody battle, her dad wins for some reason, but he already has like a new girlfriend or whatever. And so she's like, I thought you weren't going to get this kid. I didn't, I didn't agree to getting a child, you know? And I guess Sakuya's like bland weirdness, like anime otaku level weirdness <laughs> about stars. <laughs> she's just like, I can't deal with this. And you're like, okay. <laughs> so her dad is like, why do you keep bothering your stepmom? And it's like, what? Okay. So she like the mutual solution because her cousin also is not performing to his parents standards is for them to just live together <laughs> and then that that solves all the problems that they get removed from the situation and in some ways i'm like yeah like sakia keeps being like what have i done wrong why doesn't my stepmom like me and i'm like she's an unreasonable person and you should not want to be friends with her like don't just don't like remove yourself from the situation good <laughs> I think that is one thing that I really like about this series is they they really hammer home that you don't have to like people who are not nice to you. You don't have to forgive them and you don't have to you don't also have to hate them. You can just not be in their lives and not think about them and enjoy your own yeah. life. And I, I really like that because they did that not only for Sakuya, but for Chihiro with his mom as well, because he was also mm -hmm. just like okay, she's not in my life anymore. I like, I'm gonna find someone new to be my family, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that's why he lives with his aunt and uncle. Because yeah, because his mom apparently always has to have a man but can't keep a man. And then she just leaves one day, shrug, and we never hear from her again. And that's when Chihiro seemingly doesn't care. Like he's preoccupied with Sakura and Sakuya, so... Okay, that, that's cool. But so Hijiri becomes her friend first and then Yuri eventually, you know, comes around. And so, but let's start with Yuri first because he's like easier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yuri is a sweet boy, I guess. Like, I'm kind of surprised that after, you know, Chihiro chose to just move to Tokyo. I mean... Yuri was choosing to move to Tokyo too. So, but he wasn't like, oh, well, this guy has left Sakuya so I can like try again, you Swim know? In. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instead, he seemingly knew about the situation, like that Chihiro was not dating Sakura. Yeah. In the, in those last chapters when he's like hey I want you to meet my friend and Yuri's like hey what's up <laughs> I guess he yeah, just yeah, doesn't yeah. tell Sak Sakuya that um yeah. that they're not dating <laughs> yeah 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 I'm like you guys like did you learn nothing did you learn nothing from everything else like what's going on I don't understand um but yeah I don't know he's kind of he's a nice boy his lesson, I think, is a good one. Again, like, I think he is a more realistic Kazehaya from Kimini Todoke. So in some ways, I'm like, yes, I appreciate the lesson that he learns of, like, if you're only nice to people who think you, that you're wonderful and sunshine and are nice to you, like, uh, whatever, <laughs> that, that doesn't go anywhere. Like, I think his brother at one point is like is it nice to make fun of people who wear something doesn't come naturally to them like is that is that a nice thing for you to do you know I like I like their like brotherly bond and everything and he's he's just a a good boy he's a good boy yeah Yuri's Yuri's little story arc in the middle-ish of the series was really nice of just like hey, don't judge people if you don't know what their life is and don't judge people if you don't know them because you don't know anything about them. So what what are you to tell them how to live their life? I thought that was a nice thing. And then him using that lesson that he learned with Chihiro and then again at the end, I just really like that. And I think that's another example of how the characters will impact each other a little bit more than they did in Fruits Basket because Yuri is impacted by his situation with Sakuya and then Sakuya was impacted by him. Uh, was it like middle school or something like that or early high school? But yeah, just the fact that they all kind of like 
intermingle and learn lessons from each other. And then you kind of find out that the way they are currently is because of an interaction they had in the past. And I just really like that about the series, especially between Sakuya and Yuri. I feel like those two have a really nice little bond of like learning things from each other. Yeah. And they're really cute. And I like when Yuri was like, I'm not in love with her with his friends and they're like what (laughs) what and then you know he uh has a moment where they uh collided and he like accidentally fell on top of her and he was like wait a minute i do like her maybe sharing omelets is a sign of affection Uh uh-oh okay wait a second maybe i should think about that some more and i was like oh, you really thought you weren't in love with her. Like, that's, <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> like, he can't hide that. it. <laughs> yeah, I love that for you. I love that you were just like, no, cross-gender relationships can happen and not and be platonic. Like, uh, I like it, you know? <laughs> with him and Hijiri, they can. They couldn't with Sakuya. <laughs> yeah, no, no, not with Sakuya. <laughs> it was too far. Um, yeah, and I like, yeah, comparing it to Fruits Basket, I think, Maybe one of the points of Fruits Basket is that, like, the, their family is large, but so insular at the same time. Whereas with this, they're like, hey, definitely forget about your nuclear family for the most part. <laughs> Just, like, they're gone. They don't exist. And then, like, you're kind of spreading, you know, you're you're expanding outside of that and everything. But, like, it's still pretty, pretty tight. Uh, And I think one of the points of Fruits Basket is that they're like really trying to learn how to expand more naturally like that. And it takes a lot longer. And there are so many more characters that like it kind of just goes all over the place. Like, you know, like Yuki's arc with his student council people, like those student council people don't act heavily with the rest of the Somas and everything. So I think that's like a big difference. (laughs) And then we have Hijiri. I have some thoughts about her. I feel like, first of all, she's not the most fleshed out character in the bunch. She kind of feels like the comedic relief to me in a lot of ways, because she's always the one that's like breaking up the tension by like hitting someone. (laughs) Yeah, no, for sure. And like she has some good jokes, like when Shahiro, like in the very beginning, when Shahiro brings the dress that he brought for Sakura, but gives it to Sakuya when he's surprising her and then Hijiri is just like, do you know why men give women dresses to take them off? And I was like, whoa, like, girl, what the heck? <laughs> Escalation. <laughs> yeah, so Hijiri, I just, a lot of what she she does in the series is just kind of like be the instigator of a lot of situations. So like the thing with Chihiro, I doubt that like Sakuya would ever find out about him had it not been for Hajiri just being an instigator or I mean in a kind of in some ways she's also the instigator for like getting Yuri to confess to her so I don't know I I didn't enjoy her character as much but she was necessary for certain things which is just like lightening the mood every now and then and and like (laughs) also bringing the mood down. Yeah, yeah. I was like, uh, like I understand why she's kind of the instigator for lots of things because the whole conflict, I guess, of her life is that it's so curated. So she's like trying to curate experiences for other people, right? Like she's just a rich girl who's like, well, my family, you know, has normal rich people problems but like overall we're cool right like and I just want to run away for some fun but uh, she just still lives in the rich family compound somewhere right like and sees her mom and they watch movies like it's fine and chill so she's just like I want to but she like wants chaos she's like I want to sow chaos and I want to like curate things better for my friends and it's just like girl like I don't I don't know and I feel like if that had been it that would have been great, but we'll get to the big problem with Hijiri in a hot minute. Like, if if that had been all of her character, I would have been like, that's great. I love some comic relief in my drama. Like, that, we did, she doesn't need her own drama, but apparently she did. But we're going to get there. <laughs> First, we're going to talk a little bit about Kanade. Kanade. Ugh. Names. Um, so, this is the aforementioned cousin. So, we have a listener comment. 
uh, about him in particular. So at Mrs. Mary Morstan on Tumblr said, I gotta say, Kanade was one of the most relatable characters in that series. I felt so seen by his creative burnout and so emotional over his slow steps to get back into work that reflected my own mental and physical health conditions. And then the next arc, classic to Kai age gap. I was an adult. You were a child going to sit and wait till you're 18 nonsense. Why, Takaya? <laughs> Why you got to make me feel seen and loved and like someone understands my very soul and then that. So to be clear, the age gap is not with Kanade. It is with Hijiri and her servant man, Saki. So Kanade is, Kanade is a good boy, okay? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He's like, great. He, didn't do, he didn't do anything creepy. Like He had plenty of opportunity and he didn't. He's a good boy in that way. <laughs> um um, but overall, I agree with the thoughts about Kanade. So he, he de- So his whole deal is that his he was doing so hot up until like eighth grade. He he like peaked in eighth grade <laughs> apparently in terms of grades. But his parents were like, "You need to succeed. You need to go to like a prestigious college." And he was like, "But I can't though." And they're like, "There is no quitting in this household." And so he's just like, "Uh." all right, I'm just going to sit in my room for a year and do nothing because I don't understand, like, does not compute. Uh, So then he starts to, like, Sakuya's dad provides him money for taking care of Sakuya. So they don't really have to, like, do anything. They just, like, lounge around and live off that, I guess. Somehow he has enough money for that. I don't know. I didn't really understand, (laughs) like, the economics of this. I'm not going to think about it. (laughs) Like, whatever. So then he starts to get into just like making pottery, question mark, question mark, question mark. They were like, there's pottery stuff here, so we'll make pottery. Um, And then once he starts really confronting it, he gets a part-time job, but is like, it's so exhausting. How can I get a full? I have no skills. I can't get a full-time job. Um, but eventually he gets a full-time job and it just it just takes a while. It takes him years to like become a working member of society. And I agree that the steps that he went to get there were very, uh, I was like, stop talking to me. <laughs> talk, yeah, don't talk to me. Yeah, he he's definitely the most relatable character, especially to anyone over the age of like 20, probably. <laughs> yeah. In that series, the, the way, the way he like deals with being the gifted child, if you will, and having the having to come to terms that he's really not to be mean, but not mean because no one is technically special. He's not special. He's just, he's a regular guy and his parents put way too much pressure on him to be the best because they thought he was the best in eighth grade, (laughs) which is like insane. It's an eighth (laughs) grader, but yeah, just the, the pressure on him and him being like, what else am I supposed to do? I can't live my whole life like this. And then finally feeling that freedom, but then not having anything else in his life. That was very, uh, hit a little too close. (laughs) Hit a little too close to me. Like, don't, don't come at me like that. Like, I also love that he's the one who's like, Hey, you know, after Chihiro and Sakuya have clearly had a very romantic moment with each other, but she knows that he's going to leave. And so it's impossible. And she's just like crying the day before her graduation or like the day of her graduation. And Kanade just comes over and he's like, hey, hey, I'm going to tell you something that you don't want to hear. You think that this is like the hardest thing that you've ever done, uh, but it's not the hardest thing that you are ever going to do. Like, this is not this is not the end of your suffering. Your suffering will be worse. But also, you can be happy sometimes, and that's cool. And I'm like, this guy is just like, comes for it. And I appreciate him. I appreciate him for that. That was a really great line, monologue, whatever you want to call it. It was just a really great <laughs> moment at the end of that series being like, your life isn't over. It's going to keep going. You're going to be probably sadder at some point. You might be happier at some point. Like this isn't going to be the end. I was just like, Oh, that's nice. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I was like, I mean, seems dark in the moment, but it's true. And I feel like this is the message, you know, like in the end, I had written a note at some point being like, it's really weird to be reading a manga where they're already 18. And we're like only following the last year of their high school life like that's pretty weird for a shoujo manga to do normally the uh, 
get through all three years of it and, and like watch them graduate. And then that's like the end, right? And then this whole series is like, no, no, this is the beginning. This was nothing. <laughs> like, yeah. like this was formative for who, who you're going to go be for real now. <laughs> you know, like this is this is a foundation. <laughs> yeah, I guess in a way that would make the last chapters feel a little more cathartic if we think of it that way, where it's like, we get to see a little bit of like, you know, their their midpoint in life too, because we see them, I don't even know how old they're really supposed to be. I'm going to assume like after college, so like 25 maybe, but we get yeah. to see a little more of like the end of their life. So I guess if I look at it this way, that way, I could be more like, okay, that, that can be like a little bit of a cathartic ending. <laughs> we, we were seeing their beginning the whole series. So now let's see a little bit of the end too. I guess. I'm not saying that it makes the end yeah, no. better. I'm just like, <laughs> it's a good message. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so now we have to talk about Hijiri and Saki, apparently, because classic Takuya age gap refers to in Fruits Basket as well. There's an age gap romance. You all know this. <laughs> Between Toru's parents. So here, it's kind of interesting because at first you think the age gap romance is going to be with their teacher, Shizuka or something was his name. And he's like advising their star watching club at school. Like he's the advisor for that. Um, But it turns out that she was just going after him to try to make her servant guy jealous. And I was like, what is happening? (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) The whole thing with Saki honestly makes no sense. And it's very weak as a (laughs) storyline. Like, first of all, it reminds me of like if Kadocha went in the horrible route where they put Sana together with her agent, like they tried (laughs) to allude to at the beginning. But it's like, like the bad ending of a, of a anything. <laughs> yeah, like. The bad ending of Kadocha is Sonic gets with her like 30 year old agent, man. <laughs> but yes. that's kind of what it feels like. I'm just like, it it is so reminiscent of some of stories that are coming out right now, honestly. So like, clearly this is something that a lot of like, I guess shoujo, I, I don't really know of any like other demographic of manga that have like this sort of like, rich girl and their bodyguard type of like romance yeah why is this a thing now why is this happening yeah because i can think of like three or four of them in shoujo that are currently coming out and i'm just like they're all weird they're just it's a weird dynamic and especially with her having found him in a dumpster when he was in high school and she was in fifth grade and he's like actually i'm in love with you and i have been this whole time and it's just like an 11 year old what (laughs) what's wrong with you you creeper and then like you know he's straight up you know she overhears him being like oh i would never love her to like his employer and i was like girl you didn't think that that was a lie because this is super illegal if he was like hey i want to kiss this 12 year old like what is up like i don't understand and the fact that she wasn't 18 i thought was also strange because like in, in the very loosest sense of the term, I could be okay with it. I could have been like, well, at least she's 18. But like, no, why? It also had to be that she's not even 18 yet. Like everyone else in the series was. So why was she the one that was still underage? That that was also just kind of like, oh, okay. So she really wants to hammer it home. But yeah, for sure. And it's like, I like their dynamic, actually. Like, they are very funny together because she's always just, like, pretending that she's so cool and, like, super pretentious and everything. And then he just comes in and he's like, you're dumb. <laughs> and, like, just straight up, like, says the thing that, like, whatever they're fighting about. She's like, you don't know how I feel. And he's like, I do know how you feel. And you're being dumb. <laughs> and, like, that's, like, the dynamic they have. And I'm like, that's awesome. Why did we have to bring romance into this? Like, yeah, no. why could he have like just been kind of a father figure in a way? Because we never yeah. see her dad anyway, so he couldn't have just been like the dad for her. I know. I was like, come on, no. And I don't understand. It doesn't add anything like thematically <laughs> about yeah. 
families or anything. I'm like, no, no, no. It almost no. would have been more thematic to not have them be romantic because he could have been Hijiri's Kanade, basically, like for Sakuya. Yeah. So like the romance added nothing <laughs> in, in that regard. Takio is definitely just like, Hijiri needs a conflict, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> like, let's what up. I just feel like Takaya might have daddy issues. Because, like, every single one of her series is about, like, family trauma. And then all of them have, like, age gaps with minors. So I'm just like, I think this, I think, I think she might have some daddy issues she needs to work <laughs> out. And she's kind of putting older adults <laughs> together romantically because of whatever's going on there i know i definitely every time i read these series i'm like what happened to takia who hurt you <laughs> and then my husband's always like it doesn't mean that anything directly happened to her and i'm like come on though <laughs> it's a little too prevalent uh, for me to like let this go at this point <laughs> yeah i was like you don't go this hard about the same thing without it being like something that you just like have something happen to you. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm really curious, like what, what do you think the overall like theme of this was or like what theme really stuck with you from this? One of the things that I really got out of the second read was Ooh, I can't remember what chapter it was. I think it was when they all went to look at the moon. I think it was that chapter. Or they all went stargazing, you know, as they do in the series. As they, as they do, yes. <laughs> uh, but Shihiro mentions something about, like, the stars. And then Sukuya says that, like, isn't it crazy how big the world is? And yet, like we're all together and we all have like connected feelings or something like that. And I, I, I like that sort of message in the series that like the world is so big and, and people are so insignificant and yet we all mean so much to each other. I just think that I thought that was like, that made me, that made me shed a tear a little bit. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to cry right now. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yeah. That was a great moment. That was probably well, I don't think it's like technically the overall theme of the series. It was definitely like a good message that can connect in the overall theme, which is definitely more just like people affect your life and life goes on and family can be anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely think I like this thing where it's like they are technically not they they are a lot of them are still with their family like family members but they're not a typical nuclear family unit and i like that because i really struggle with like the trope of found family and i know that it comes from a good place it comes from like mostly like queer kids needing to find their own families cuz their their families reject them and i understand that and i get that but i feel like now the meaning of it has become just like, isn't this just a friend group? I don't understand. <laughs> so like, like, I read stuff and I'm like, but they're just friends though. Like they, they, they have families elsewhere. Like, I don't know. I don't get it. Um, so I like this where it's like, well, you know, Sakiya now lives with her slightly older cousin and Yuri lives with his brother and his grandma because his parents died and... Hijiri lives with her weird bodyguard <laughs> and her mom somewhere in a compound, like whatever, being a weirdo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Chihiro lives with his aunt and uncle. Like, I like that it's like, hey, yeah, family is still important, but you can definitely, you don't have to be like your mom and dad or, or everything, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, that's good. I like that idea of found family for sure. It can be whoever makes you the happiest and whoever cares about you it doesn't have to be the ones who produced you but literally could not give two craps about you so like i i really like that part of the series too yeah oh my gosh that reminds me of when kanade kanade was like talking to sakia's dad i guess when he was her dad was making the proposal to him and he was like aren't you worried about your daughter living with an older man, like, that's weird. And he was just like, you know, her dad was like, 
I I trust you both. And Kanade was like, so he doesn't give a shit. And I was like, oh my god, <laughs> amazing and terrible. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this guy, he's, just, he's just going for it. Yeah, and I liked the, I feel like there were probably mixed metaphors in here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna like let that slide because I like the idea of being like, they're looking up at the stars, but the stars were you all along. And then like the imagery of like aliens and wizards that gets thrown in, like Saki is like, I'm an alien and I just wanted to live on planet Earth with everybody. And then she realizes like, oh, well, maybe I can do that. But like have to find the other weirdo aliens on the planet Earth or we just go live on a, a different planet. And I'm like, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I a lot of what Sakuya says, I like I love her conclusions to a lot of like her life situations and everything like that. She's just kind of like. I don't know. She is a ball of sunshine, but at the same time, she's like very deeply hurt by everything, but she's just trying to get by. So I really, I love her character. Yeah, for sure. And I love the, you know, I guess one of the other big themes was this discussion of like reality versus illusion. Like one of the the part in the beginning where Chihiro just goes so hard the second time that he meets Sakuya, you know, he gets off of the train and they talk to each other. And he's, she's just like, who are you? Like, I don't know who you are. I thought you were my cousin's friend, but he thinks you're my boyfriend. And so that's very weird, you know? And he's just like, I could be a wizard <laughs> or like any number of things, but I can't be who I am. Like, reality is too painful. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> like, what is going on here? That's weird. But what, what I took from this was that like reality versus illusion, like what you see and what you feel may not always be appropriate or like kind but that's always going to be real it's kind of just a matter of perception like not like the glass is half full or half empty but like it's both at the same time and you can sit in the feelings of both at any given moment you know and and that's fine the stars the way we perceive them they're not tiny specks of light like that's what we see but they're like giant balls of gas in the sky that we just can't perceive they just in this just you know both both things are true at the same time (laughs) that that's fine in a lot of ways that can also go back to like yuri's conclusion that he came to with sakuya about like not passing judgment on someone before you get to know them first because like you could see something completely different than what the person actually is so i think that's that definitely like ties into that too yes this is a very good series with a lot of great like one-liners. Like I think I wrote the most notes I have written in a long time because it's just me being like, oh my God, awesome line, <laughs> right down the line. Oh my God, awesome, <laughs> you know, like panel, like, oh my God, I'm crying. <laughs> just like Yeah, the really art good. in this series is phenomenal. I feel like, like Fruits Basket had great art, but this one is is gorgeous the way that a lot of the panels are laid out I'm just like I'm looking at it I'm like it I feel so much emotion coming out of this and uh, just the sky and the starry imagery I loved it it was gorgeous yeah so so much twinkling so many stars (laughs) I also noticed that Takio is big fan because I was reading it digitally so I guess I noticed it more like big fan of two panel spreads but kind of like there's a bar on the right hand side and the left hand side and then there's just a big image in the middle spreading across two pages but that was always split for me because I was like reading on my phone yeah <laughs> and anytime I, like, I would try to crack my book open a little bit more there's like white spaces in between so like they don't even connect <laughs> I know okay oh uh, that's actually interesting because yeah in the in the digital version I kept being like why are the why is there like a weird white bar that's in between both of them so like that's just how it was printed that's wild <laughs> yeah it, it I would have to like kind of close my my book just a little bit and kind of like push it in so I could connect the page <laughs> that's weird interesting okay new mystery but no <laughs> now we have to answer the one true question Colin. <laughs> this comes from at shoujo shoujo jose shoujo say world on twitter gosh i will learn how to say words someday so which pain made you cry the most 
that's what I recall from reading the series is crying a lot. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize we're supposed to pick the one that made me cry the most. Like that, there's so many. <laughs> yeah, I have like three of the most notable ones that made me cry the most. Okay, go for it. The first is, I feel like this one's obvious, but the page reveal of Chihiro seeing Sakura uh, at the school for the first time. That literally, like, my heart sunk to my stomach, and I'm like, they did not just go there (laughs) and started crying. (laughs) And then just his stunned reaction, and then the page, like, a couple after that where he's like, oh, I I see you gave up. And then he's like looking up in the sky and the the cherry blossoms are kind of like turning into stars. That is also really pretty imagery in the series, the way they blend the cherry blossoms with the stars. It like also blending like Chihiro and Sakuya together. Um, Yeah. Yeah, so that that one was pretty devastating. (laughs) devastated devastation number one (laughs) yeah and then the one that I remember the first time I read I cried again the second time but the first time I read it I was sobbing I was like uncontrollably sobbing was when Yuri had confessed to Sakuya and then they meet each other at the beach and we find out that the reason Sakuya has tried to start smiling was because of Yuri but she has to reject him and take away his smile essentially I was sobbing (laughs) during that whole scene (laughs) like I wasn't really like rooting for Yuri in any way but that moment it really really got to me and then the last one was definitely when Chihiro and Sakuya were saying their final goodbye (laughs) and (laughs) Like, they both knew that they were in love with each other, but they didn't do anything until Sakuya, you know, went in to kiss him, and then he did it back, and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. I was I was surprised by that. I was like, wow, they got to kiss, like, three times, and they know that they love each other, and now they're going to part. No! It's just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what made that kiss ten times worse. I was like, oh, yeah. God. <laughs> I was like, this is terrible. Okay, so I actually have, I all right, I'll try to limit myself to three. I think I have three different devastating pages. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> so, I mean, I for sure just sobbed through all like the middle soccer stuff. But the page that got me, I guess, was after she had tried to commit suicide and he like goes to visit the hospital a bunch. And you just see the time progression in three panels and he's explaining how like his his thoughts have evolved about how he feels about her. So, you know, at first he's like, I love her so much uh, and I'm trying to be so good for you. And then he like becomes resentful and then he goes back to like chastising himself for being resentful towards her. Like I and then it's just a cycle. And I was like, oh, my God, no. <laughs> And you can see the trees in the, like, there's a tree in the background. So at first it's like fall, then it's like summer, then it's just a deep, dark winter. And it's like the main background is black. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm crying so hard. This is devastating stuff. A lot of the Chihiro stuff really, really hits. <laughs> it's just hits so hard and stuff. And then I think the the second moment that really got me, like, I was like, oh no. Kind of day is coming for me, but this particular moment when he was explaining how him and Sakya started living together was, you know, he's the one, you know, her parents are such jerks that they're like, we didn't tell her that you're going to go live together. So like, you have to go uh, tell her that she's going to go live with you. And so it's just a page of her being like, oh, you know, he, he like finds her in the backyard or somewhere on the street. And she's like, oh, do you forget where our house is? Like, here, let me show you. And he's just like, you're not going home. Uh, That's not your home anymore. You don't belong there anymore. And, you know, otherwise it's just Sakuya being silent and, like, devastated. And it goes on like that. And there's a whole page after that of them, her just, like, being their feelings. And I was like, no, (laughs) no, (laughs) it's too much. No more Sakuya sadness. No more Sakuya sadness. And then, oh my gosh, it's just so hard to only pick. It was impossible to pick one. So hard to pick even three. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, 
<laughs> the I think the third one was I guess Chihiro's avoiding Sakuya for a while after he has found out that Sakura has woken up, but he hasn't like told her he's going to Tokyo or no, like he's about to tell her um and everything. And you know, they're just in the hallway, they meet, she's like returning something, and he's just like, I have to go now. I'm I'm in a hurry, and he just walks past her. And she just like sinks into the attendance sheet that she's holding. And I was like, no, <laughs> no. The little things really got me like, yeah, just so, so the expressions hard. in this series, I feel like they feel so visceral, like yes. the way they express emotion. Uh, it's like drawn. It's so visceral. And I feel like that's what really gets you about this one is just the emotions come through so much. Yeah, honorable mention to when I guess they had their whole like kissing moment and then Shihiro is leaving for real and like you see his back and you see Sakuya like reaching out to him. He turns around and she like retreats her hand like back into her other hand and I'm like, no, <laughs> no, it's too much. I can't. So I just cried the whole time. That's basically what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> We're cutting out a lot of moments that we cry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, that's like a... That's just the curated moments of crying time. So there's, you know, like 18 more. Um, <laughs> so it's basically if you really want a cathartic cry, like this is this is it. This is it. <laughs> um, well, so I think that's Twinkle Stars. Like, do you have any any final thoughts about this, Colleen? I sat in silence for a good like five minutes after I finished the series. And I was just like, man this hit so much harder the second time and I went over to my boyfriend I was just like oh I'm so lucky I have you (laughs) I'm like oh my gosh this is what this is what shoujo reading a shoujo does to me I'm just like I feel everything all at once no for sure I definitely woke up and was like I'm so glad that my husband is with me and that he loves me and this is good. <laughs> and like, I don't know. This is good for sure. Uh, and I, I've only read it this one time, but I definitely was already like, man, this is going to be even worse the second time. I'm just going to cry more because you know what happens. You know the mystery. You're going to be like, oh, things hit different. Like, oh, no. <laughs> that is one thing I didn't mention yet, but um, having – known what happens in the series going back to read it the uh, second time felt like I could understand a lot of like what was going on and a lot of like the early dialogue without being like what what is this like what's happening when you know what's happening you're like oh this is all starting to make sense like so that is one good thing of like going having gone back to read it I'm like oh this is like a mind explosion. <laughs> I understand everything yeah. now. For sure. I definitely was starting to get law. Like, you know, they, they would reference in the early pages being like, when you said that thing to me, like, it really just struck me. And I'm like, what did he say? Why did he say it again? I don't remember. I have to like go back and look it up. And like, this is so hard. Now I would be like, oh, yes, obviously everything makes sense to me. <laughs> oh, no. Cry some more. So, uh, yeah, I definitely anticipate just, you know, five years from now crying again. That'll, that'll be fun. <laughs> and I will leave you with a perhaps not exactly direct quote, but a quote. The winners in this world are the ones who laugh, even if the road they're on is shitty. That's that's, that's the real conclusion here. <laughs> Great quote. Great quote. <laughs> Love this manga. Love crying. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for listening to Shoujo and Tell. Comments, questions, constructive criticism, concerns. You need to tell us how much you cried at this manga. Email shoujointel at gmail.com or leave a comment on the episode's YouTube page. We're at Shoujo and Tell on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram, as long as those platforms, I mean, some of them are imploding, so I don't I don't know anymore. Just just find this in your podcast directories, y'all. <laughs> like email send me uh, smoke signals. I don't know. <laughs> Colleen, where can people find you and your work on the internet? You can find me at YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram on at Colleen's Manga Rex, and then on Twitter at manga underscore nostalgic. 
as long as Twitter still exists. If Twitter is still <laughs> there, you can find me there. You can find all my friends. <laughs> yes. Well, you can make the shonen jump to shoujo. It's so good. <laughs> Are you excited every time you see a new episode from us? If so, please consider leaving a rating on Apple Podcasts. This will help the show reach more hearts, or at least ears. Thanks again for listening. We'll be back next time for Alice 19th by Yu Watase with the hosts of Shoujo Sunday. Or I'll be continuing our clamp journey with Asher with short episodes about Dukleon, clamp school defenders, and clamp school detectives. Look, for once, I've got plans this time. I'm I'm like not just like, I don't know what we're doing next. I know what we're doing next. So stay tuned uh, to see how that all shakes out. Until then, bye.